last time I was working on a Technics SU 3500 with the shortest cable in the world. It was a good unmolested 46 year old amplifier with two blown output modules. I found some bad transistors and made some adjustments to bias current and offset. And we're about to see if they work and what else is wrong with this amp. Well they're happy little bunnies. There's a lot of dust in here and these pots are fairly open so I reckon they'll be somewhat crunchy. My favourite is always the balance pot. Oh. Let's try the volume. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> these aren't too clever either. <laughs> Check the phono stage. That's good. Check the second phono stage. I've only got one channel, what's that about? Is it the knob? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dodgy selector switch. Yeah, and it's on this long shaft. <laughs> That's just switches in there. <laughs> you also notice the power light doesn't work. Oh, oh well. Pull these back out, they're basically in the way now. So, all that's got to come off. Before I try and rip this clean off, there's a circlip there. <laughs> Let's ping that off. This is tight this one. <laughs> oh, these come off very easily. <laughs> oh, I can't get this off at all. Oh, blimey. I'm going to loosen this off, see if I can use a panel to lever these off. I might well go to Technics Hell for this, but this looks pretty thick and chunky to me. I reckon it will take it. Pop a bit of wood in there just to shim that. Bit of a bounce. Oof, there's one. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> that was a struggle. Oh, it's a bit awkward. <laughs> it's like a springy clip behind there. <laughs> oh, no choice but to touch it. Oh, oh, there we go. Are my sockets long enough? Just about. Well, this might become harder work. Let's <laughs> see what unplugs. <laughs> okay. Well, these pots and switches are going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, these are, although I could take these off, there's a lot of wiring and I'd rather not disturb what I don't have to. All these can go in together, so all I've got to do is actually unsolder these three wires and deal with this. <laughs> and as we've seen before, they've always wrapped the wire around these, so it's probably easier just to unsolder these lugs from the other side. Oh yes, this is easier than wrestling with the wrapped on wire. <laughs> Actually that works so well, I'll do the same here. Is 
this ground right here, I'm just going to snip a little bit off. So there's that lot ready. That's it, bath time for this lot. Oops. That's some amazingly thick dust there. That's going to need a bit more cleaning. Well, I think that softened it. I'm just going to rinse it off with some alcohol. So I've got the switches out of the drying oven. Contact should be a lot cleaner now. I'm just going to add a bit of deoxy in there, mainly to lubricate them. I'm hoping the stuff runs all the way down. I think it will. The open frame switches get quite stiff after this. Same with these. These are a bit harder to get into really. <laughs> I think the trick really is to just put a bit in this cavity. And just work them. <laughs> this switch uses a rack and pinion to move and there's also a ball bearing and a spring to give it a sort of a notched feeling. Um, I'm just going to give it a little bit of lubrication. I'm just going to brush some in there. Same with this one. Oh, we've got this bit of a wiring loom here. Oh, it's just another switch there. Same again. Let's 
going to be a bit of lube in there. As for these on the board, they're a bit harder to get at. So, I think I might just put some through here. You can see on this board there's a lot of capacitors. That's not unusual for an amplifier, but these ones have a reputation of occasionally leaking and corroding their own legs off. Now I'm having a feel around on this. None of them feel bad or loose. In fact, the ones that are standing up, I don't see any signs of corrosion. These little 10 microfarad ones here, stuck in underneath, these look fine. There's no green corrosion or anything. Just to make sure, I'm going to take a few out as samples and just inspect them and measure them. I'll start with this one. You can see how they've bent the legs over on these, they're quite long. It's going to take someone soldering, I'll tell you. I'm going to go with that one. So there's my sample, I've got a 10 mic cap, 220 and a 47 mic cap. Visually, let's pull these little sleeves back a bit. I don't see any corrosion at all. Not on this one. And not on this one. These look pristine. Let's check out the 220 mic one first. Suit measuring. 244, slightly over, but these aren't bad figures. Next, the 47 mic. Looks quite healthy to me. Probably the 10 mic farad cap. Again, looking good. I don't see any need to change these. And they're not cheap parts either, just going to run the repair cost up. It's not needed. So that can go straight back where it came from. So can that one, and the 10 mic cap straight back in. Let's bend the legs over, just like they did originally. Bend this one the same way. Put the input selector switch back on. Got the holes lined up. Try and solder the chassis corners on first. Hold the thing steady. Well, I just noticed this leg here is actually snapped off. It's not quite reaching the top of the board. I'm going to poke this copper wire in and try and solder that against it. Just snip that off. Bend it over. And we'll solder that one on first. <laughs> and to test it, move the switch all the way that way, and we should measure a short. So from this bottom pin to here, yes, perfect. I'll solder the rest up now.
So that can go back on there. Let's pop the shield over here. This is the mode switch, so it's the stereo left or right or backwards stereo, whatever. This one's a bit easier because half the pins aren't soldered at all. Then we've got the three-way switch for the source select and another one. Filter select switches are going next. Let's not forget to put the resistor back on. Went from there to there, and the other side exactly the same. From there, bend the legs slightly. Then we've got the speaker select switches, just sit there. I can get them in. There we go. Not sure I can hold them in position without burning myself. What I'll do, I'll solder one pin on each one. Actually, they're joined together, so I'll just do the one. I'm going to stick my finger up on this one and over there. There we are. Tidy that up a bit. These are the phono impedance switches, so these need to be working well. So the left on, then I assume red is for right. Let's pop that ground pin back in. Now the tone control balls can go back in. I think they went this way around. These are connections for the volume knob. These came off the volume knob as well. They're awkward to get in these are. Last connection to make is tap this ground connection on here. I hope it doesn't unsolder everything. Oh, hold steady. We might recall the power light doesn't work. That's this little bulb here. Little 7.5 volt thing. A bit of an unusual voltage, a bit difficult to get hold of. I'm going to replace it with an LED, an orange one, because that's what colour the filter is, so it should work quite well. To make this fit inside there, I'm going to have to sand off the little skirt around here. <laughs> this polarity doesn't matter because it's AC, so it's only going to work for half the waveform.
just snip this bulb off take the LED just put a sleeve over the one leg just to insulate them and stick it in the uh, rubber housing put some heat shrink sleeving around those just so I can insulate it afterwards just push it out of the way trim these legs up a bit <laughs> how did I miss that? <laughs> Put the sleeve over them, hide it in there. Pop that through like the bulb did. Lovely. Now what we're going to do is install this resistor in series to stop it blowing up. And it just so happens that green one there, that is a 2.2 ohm resistor that was in series with the bulb. I'm just going to change that for something like 470 ohms. Should keep this down to about 10 milliamps where the LED is happy. Put this wash back on here and a nut. And put this long shaft back on. We'll better not forget this nut. Now I've got to cram all of that back onto this front panel. Oh, let's try and line all these up <laughs> all at once and all together. What's stopping it? Go. Get some of these cables tucked in here. Might help keep things in the right place. Pop a screw in this corner here just to hold this end together. Put this bracket on. I don't think I needed to take it off after all. <laughs> Same this side. I'll try and push the headphone socket into position. There we are. Put that washer back over. Then the nut. There's not much thread here, so <laughs> using the very tips of my fingers. Now the power switch. Put the LED in. Oh, the cables don't reach. I do if I move that. Lovely. Feed these switches through here. I remember they came out in one go. So I've got to wiggle them to get them back in. <laughs> there we go. The volume knob's quite a greasy thing. Um, it's using this high viscosity grease called uh, something like Rocol Killer Poise, which I stopped making years ago. So I try not to clean it off if I can help it, but sometimes you don't know. <laughs> there are other greases you can use, but they're never quite as good. Yeah, the original residue is still on here and its job is to make this quite stiff to move, um, which it's doing quite well. Let's put this spring back on and then try and align it all. Push that in, that should clip into place. There's another spring at the bottom, let's make sure that's in the right place as well. Yes. Yep, that's it, although it doesn't feel that smooth. Maybe that grease has gone. Mm. I'm just going to clean the shaft off. 
that grease will be <laughs> several decades old so yeah it's not supposed to dry out but no, clearly it does I've got this red sticky grease here it's not quite as sticky but <laughs> it'll have to do that's far too much oh well <laughs> let it sort itself out but it moves for you now this will have to come off again <laughs> annoyingly and the cover's going on I can pull that back on and that's secured with this circlip if I put these knobs back on I'm going to glue the inserts back inside <laughs> bit of epoxy resin I reckon got this stuff, it's supposed to be a 50-50 mix <laughs> oh there we go Yeah. <laughs> I think the syringe halves weren't quite aligned. That's annoying. I need to make sure that I align the flats of these with the notch so they just sort of opposite each other. If I get that wrong, this is never going to look good. I'm going to wipe some around the inside of this. and just pop this in this one lines up with the notch like that now we've got a full set of nice firm knobs that don't slide around much better these switch caps on well that's right there was one missing <laughs> put these modules back in again hopefully for the last time hopefully this is the final test well the light works, that looks nice and healthy, check the volume, yes, balance, yep that's perfect. Those don't make much difference because my signal generator is quite low impedance so yeah, doesn't matter. Check the other phone no input. Absolutely stunning again, perfect. And that's working great. Auxiliary one. Auxiliary two. Tape deck two. Take number one, they're all working, perfect. I'm going to put a square wave in one of the channels. So now we can check the craziness of this mode select switch. Reverse. 
stereo left plus right wow just the left just sine waves just the right well so that's working fine tone defeat yeah let's try these filters low yeah high oh <laughs> loudness oh yes to the treble knobs yes and the bass another nice and toasty let's check the DC offset again that's the right channel Check that bias current, 14 and 13. That's perfect. <laughs> and this one. Oh yes. Well I think we say to put the covers on now. Put the plug back on, put a better fuse in it. Well that's looking stunning now. I don't think anyone can complain at that. Oh, apart from the missing switch cap. <laughs> We're going to need three good samples then. I have a plan how to make one, <laughs> but it's going to get messy. These switch caps are quite an intricate shape and they definitely were moulded. Um, you couldn't machine this because you'd never get any tooling down there accurately. So I'm going to try moulding them myself. I'll cast the switch caps out of polyurethane resin, but before that I'm going to make a mould out of silicon. My experience with this, I need to make a three part mould. So this is the side view of our switch. Now my experience tells me that you need to fill the resin up from the bottom upwards and let it vent out the top. Any other way around trying to tip the resin into the top you end up with just air bubbles in here and it's a disaster. And I have the little spout here and it's going to go into a channel and from this channel I'm going to have some sort of filling nozzle. A bit like this and these will be vent holes will come up from here and here. And whilst I'm doing this I might as well mould a few. I've drawn that wrong. <laughs> so ignoring my mistake around here, what we're going to do is we're going to split the mould at this level. So it's got to come apart. And then probably at this level. No, level with these. That's how I'm going to do it. So we're going to have a bottom, we're going to have a top, and a middle. <laughs> the bottom of the moulding box I've actually put some plaster seam which I've rolled flat. And this is actually going to form the top of the bottom layer. So I'm going to roll out a piece of plaster seam, just a small piece, just to make that channel. And it only needs to be about two inches long, so I'm just going to cut that off there. Just continue to sculpt this to be that like U shape. As smooth as possible. For well, the interest of getting your resin part back out of it, and see if I can carefully peel this up off the table and place it in there. The next important step is to put some marks in here, little divots as a key. These are a reference that hold the mould in the right orientation. If you forget this, you're going to have terrible trouble and <laughs> quality problems. I have to be very careful we don't make these symmetrical. <laughs> Just make sure that there's no sort of undercuts in these little bits. Any undercuts is going to make the mould sort of <laughs> undetachable.
The silicone is quite runny. Let's pour out 100 grams into here. What well, we've got 102, 103 grams. I need to add 2 or 3 grams of this tin catalyst to this. Oh, lumin stuff. There we are, 106. We get stirring. We don't want to be too overzealous with this. So introduce a load of air. But it's got this purple dye in it, apparently, so you can see that it's evenly mixed, so you don't see any streaks. So I'll follow their instructions, exactly as they say. Well, that's looking good to me. Well, that's ready to demold now. Which is going to be a bit of a pain. <laughs> Trying to cut this excess sort of <laughs> flash off around here. <laughs> As the plan is to mould these this way up, I need to attach a little filling spout there, like I've done here. I'm just going to mount that in this plasticine there just to hold it still. I'll just put a dab of glue on the very tip. So I'm going to put a bit of silicon spray in this just to lubricate it, stop it sticking. And that should allow me to get this back into there. Now they've dried on, hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to put another little dab of glue there. I'm going to load it in to the mould. And to make a filling spout, I'm going to use this sort of rubber bung on the end of this stick. Mount that just right at the end. I've taken it out of the moulding box again so I can put some silicon spray right on the underneath of these parts. Because it would be a disaster if the uh, silicon stuck to them. <laughs> Try to measure out three grams more accurately. There we go. And 100 grams again. It's goopy stuff. In she goes. A few air bubbles in this. I'm actually going to uh, degas it in a vacuum chamber. That'll do. There's less bubbles now. I'm just going to pour this very slowly into here. Then the same way as before I need to put some sort of little dimples in here to make a key to join it all in the right place. So I stuck some LEDs on a little stirrer stick. I'm just going to plop them in there. Now we can take these out. I need to slightly release this out of the casing because I need to actually slide it further down the mould box because <laughs> so I need a bit more height than this. It's <laughs> about right. So I put some more mould release spray on this. Make sure I get it down all the edges. And especially deep inside these switches. I think that's set now. <laughs> it's time to demould it all. Um, <laughs> this could be a challenge. 
Well, there we are. That's supposedly three separate pieces. <laughs> you can just make them out. I'm not too encouraged how stuck together it feels. Well, it hasn't gone exactly to plan, but no, I think we'll get away with it. What happened is the silicon sections actually stuck together, so that silicon release spray didn't really work. I've managed to salvage it. Just have to make sure that I line these moulds up properly. Let's lube it up. It probably leak. <laughs> Check I've got those the right way round. Well, they sit nice and snugly, so it might actually work out. Get plenty of lube in there. <laughs> That's a real snagging point. <laughs> sort of settles there, okay. This is a two part polyurethane resin. I'm going to put 10 grams of uh, each half in. Okay, 12 grams of each half. <laughs> Now this stuff dries a sort of off-white colour, sort of a yellowy colour, so I'm going to put some uh, black dye in there. It's not going to make it black, just grey, but one, two, three, four, uh, like that. <laughs> Time is of the essence now, this stuff goes off pretty quickly. I'm just going to pour this in and hope it don't all leak out of the joints. is leaking a little bit. Yeah there's the colour change. <laughs> That's definitely grey now. Yeah the pot's uh, gone less runny. <laughs> I'll leave that for about 20 minutes. Now that's ready to demould now. <laughs> that's rock hard. Um, it's also a bit <laughs> stuck to the bench. Oh dear. <laughs> So it should work by just taking that off the bottom, exposing that sprue. And the plan was I'd be able to <laughs> just snip this off. <laughs> There's one. Oh, snap it off, that'll work. And there we have the goods. need to snip these little bits off. I'm going to mount this on here. Now this has got that silicon release spray on and before I can paint it I need to get the silicon off and really the best way I found is to sand it off. And you'd never know the difference. And now with a full complement of knobs and switches. Well I'm calling that a finish now, hopefully Richard's happy with it, and on a personal note, happy birthday Wilma, she's 80 today, catch you next time. <laughs>